Hey, it is Trisha here with Dakota Dixies tonight. And I am going to, um, thought it would be fun tonight, I'm going to make some sweater pumpkins and wanted to kind of show you guys how to do that. So, um, yeah, I so I made these about a year ago for the first time and they just turned out really cute. You don't have to have a sewing machine. Um, you don't have to have much skill <laughs> either. Um, so just some basic um, supplies and they're really cute and fun. So I'm gonna show you one. I actually just made this one the other night. Um, and I mean, it probably takes you, I don't know, 15 minutes once you get the hang of it. So it's really pretty quick little craft um, and fun for the fall. What you'll need to start with is a sweater. So if you have an old sweater that you're just like, it, sometimes they shrink up in the wash or it's pilling or whatever, um, that works great. Otherwise, um, Goodwill and some of your um, thrift stores are perfect. Hey, Danette, uh, Mickey, we got a couple people on. Um, so if you have like a, a local thrift store or anything like that, um, you can usually find them for under five dollars um, for a sweater since you're gonna cut it apart. So um, I'm gonna show you the one that I'm gonna use tonight. And it's kind of fun to find, you know, you can find fall colors, um, rust, mustard, um, burnt orange. If you live in the Texas area, you can probably find a lot of those. Um, but whatever you like to decorate for fall, whatever colors, um, this is, these are a couple others um, that I've done. This one is kind of a gray, um, gray and white kind of marbly type sweater. Um, this one I made last year, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that, how you can make a big one. Um, this t is a little bit more involved, so if you are a sewer, you basically just have to be able to sew one seam, um, but you can use the um, you know, front or back part of the sweater, not just the sleeve and you can, and make a big one. So, and it's the same process, but you kind of get, it's kind of cute to have a big one too. And then you can put some of the little ones around it. But, um, so you start with the sleeve and basically, hopefully you guys can see, okay, let me know if you need me to adjust the camera or anything like that. But, um, you'll fold the sleeve in half like this. So just kind of on top of itself. And then you're just gonna cut right along where you folded, where it matches up with the shoulder. I'm gonna turn it this way so it's easier to see. So you kind of folded it in, and then you're gonna cut right here. Um, so you basically have, you're just cutting the whole sleeve off, but you can make two pumpkins out of one sleeve. Um, so I'm gonna do that. You need some decent scissors for this um, that can cut through, obviously, the sweater. So, I'll get that cut apart. Um, also, I should probably back up just a second and tell you all the supplies that you need. Sorry about that. So, yeah, so you need a scissors, your sweater, um, some embroidery thread, um, a pretty decent size needle. So, I think this one is, is four inches. And I found a set of two of these at, um, I think Hobby Lobby and Walmart both had them. So, um, and the reason you want a nice long needle like this is you're gonna use it to kind of uh, go all the way down through your pumpkin. I'll show you that in a minute. But, um, so have a nice long needle like that. And then just some twine and a glue gun, which I have plugged in over here. Um, I think that's it in your sweater, which I said. Okay, so now you have your whole sleeve uh, that you cut off and you're just gonna keep that folded in half and then you're gonna cut um, that folded edge. So you're gonna have, have two parts of your sleeve. So just cut that. There. So yeah, I was saying the first time I made these was about a year ago, so now you're gonna have your two sleeves. And so you can make you know, both of them. So I'm just gonna set part of it to the side um, and I'm gonna use this part of the sleeve. Um, so I made these about a year ago with um, my mom and a friend of hers and her daughter. We love to um, craft together. Nope, pumpkins, I just hopped on. 
Oh, <laughs> no, sorry, no new fashion trends, trends, Jamie. But um, if you want to get crafty, you can, you can, um, you know, get your get your pumpkin on, have a buy an old, get an old sweater, and you can make one with us. So, um, so you're gonna have your section here. And the first thing you want to do is um, fold it inside out or just turn it inside out, I should say. And I'm going to use the wider end. So you kind of have the narrow where the cuff was and then the wider end um, for the base of my pumpkin. Okay. So, so yeah, we, we like to craft together um, my mom and her friend and her daughter. And so this was a fall craft that we came up with last year and um, had fun making them together. So you're going to... Um, Take that end, that wide end, and you're just gonna tie it with your piece of twine. Um, and you wanna get it towards the end, but not so much that it's gonna slip off, because this is gonna be um, the base of your pumpkin on the inside. So just tie it around like this, and then I'm gonna tie it, double knot it, because we don't want that to come undone. So, like this, okay? And then you can cut those little tails off um, if you'd like, just so they're less bulk there. And then if you want to cut some of this off, you can. This is just gonna go inside of your pumpkin. And so just getting rid of some of that bulk. Um, so I'm just gonna do that. Just have a little trash can here and then I'll show you. And it doesn't have to look pretty because again, it's just gonna be on the inside. So there you have that. Okay, and then you'll turn it back right side out. There we go. And then you're going to have this, and that's going to be the bottom of your pumpkin. Okay, so I'll set it down there. Now, oh, hi, Kathy. My, my Aunt Kathy is on here, and she was requesting the sweater pumpkin. So, um... So yeah, so now you have it turned inside out and now you're just gonna use your polyfill um, to fill that up. And I can't remember if I said that as one of the supplies, but you need some polyfill to uh, fill up your pumpkin. And you can get a big old bag of it at um, Walmart or Hobby Lobby or if you do other crafts, quilting or anything like that, you're probably gonna have some of this stuff around your house anyways. I'm sure Kathy that you do. My Aunt Kathy is a excellent sewer um, crafter and I do like to do crafts. Crafting I think is super fun. Um, my daughter Clara I wish was a little bit more into it. It's just not her favorite thing. She'll do them with me from time to time but I used to love doing crafts with my mom and she was in a craft club. So you want to fill it up. You're trying to get it um, round. You don't want to fill it up too tall because you need to leave some of this Part to make your stem. So I'm going to add a little bit more to mine. Um, and after you get the polyfill in there, you can kind of even it out or smush it around and get the shape that you want. I think that's good. And you can kind of adjust it later too. So, all right. So you got your kind of round pumpkin shape. Hi, Linda. Oh, all kinds of fun people on here. So I'm gonna do this. And so now um, you're ready to start making your stem. So you're gonna take your um, twine again and you don't wanna cut it. So just kind of unravel some and you're gonna tie that and try to get it kind of down tight against where your polyfill goes to. So I'm gonna tie it tight and then I'm gonna double knot it because um, again, I don't want that to come undone. Perfect, okay. And that little tail you can cut off as well. It'll kind of get covered up, but you can cut that off as long as you tied it nice and tight. You don't want that to come undone. Okay. So I'm gonna try real hard not to burn myself with the glue gun uh, for this next part, as uh, you all know with crafting sometimes. Um, so to start with though, you're gonna start, so you have, I hope you can see this okay. So you have your twine and you're just gonna start wrapping it around um, your sweater here. And this is how you're gonna make your stem. 
And you want to kind of hold it tight um, so that it wraps and stays um, kind of close together. So I'll show you. You can see that I'm starting to build on top of each other. And you can kind of make your stem really however tall you want to. Um, I like the stems to be a little bit taller. So this is the kind of finished look we're going for um, height-wise there. And the nice thing, so when you're wrapping around the sweater, this just um, helps it kind of form around there. So you're just kind of turning and turning and I'm just holding it tight um, as I'm wrapping. These are really fun um, to give as little gifts also because um, they're kind of just a, a quick fun craft and would be just cute to give to a friend with a little candle or bag of coffee or something like that to add to their fall stuff. I like to, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the, there's a book called Love Languages and um, my, I show love through giving gifts. So that that is my love language. So if you get a gift from me, you are loved by me. <laughs> and you might be loved even if you don't, but um, okay. So I have it pretty tall there. I think that's about what I want. You're gonna add a little bit more height to it too when you finish the top of it. So now you're gonna take your glue gun. I'm gonna move this over here. Um, and if you do a lot of crafting, you probably already know this little trick, but I like to put a little piece of paper kind of underneath my glue gun and hopefully my cord here doesn't pull it back. Um, because you know, it kind of oozes and drips out a little bit, so. It helps catch that glue. So just a little dot there. And then you can kind of wrap over your glue and let it sit. Um, and even if you wanted to go around one more time and catch that extra little bit of glue. So basically you're just putting one little dot of glue so that you can secure your, your twine there and you don't have to hold it anymore. You still don't wanna cut it though. So you can unwrap a little bit more there. So now you kind of have all this extra on top, right? So um, so you need to cut that down so that um, you can have form the top of your stem. And so you might have to do it kind of in two steps. So kind of cut the bulk of it there initially. And then you can cut again. So yeah, these little crafty lives that Julie, I know she did awesome last week with her cute little houses. Um, I just think they're fun. And so if you guys like them, let us know. Or if you see a craft um, that you think would be fun to make, but you're not quite sure or you have any good fun ideas, just let us know because I enjoy doing this. So hopefully I'm doing an okay job and you're able to understand what I'm trying to show you. All right, so you can kind of make, cut that down. It makes a little bit of a mess, but it's okay. So there you can kind of see you've got your flat top there. Clean some of this off. So this is the part where the glue gun gets a little tricky where you don't want to burn yourself. Um, but basically, you can kind of just take your glue and I'm just going to put a little bit it of course can cool on you, so you don't, um, you might have to do it in steps here, but so I'm gonna kind of put some around there to start with, and then you can kind of keep wrapping. And what you're eventually gonna start doing, let's see if I can get this to stay there, is coiling this on top. So I'm gonna add a little bit more glue here. You can kind of put a little there. And it should stay hot enough for you to finish your coiling. But once you get it going, it kind of will just coil on its own um, as it starts to stick down to the glue. So 
and you're just coiling it, coiling it to the center. I hope you can see this. So I'll show you here up close and you might just as it cools then you can kind of press it in and hold it there but I don't know if anybody else feels this way about hot glue but it's kind of satisfying to pull the little pieces off as after it cools so you kind of have it coiled on top and then this I have one little piece here that I want to finish off and so I'm just going to add one more little dot of glue right to the center. And then just push that last little end down in there and let that cool. And then you can just take your scissors and now you can trim that off of there. So there, you have the end of your little stem. All right. So the stem probably takes the longest and it probably took me longer because I'm talking and explaining, but um, once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. So I'm gonna set that over here. Now you're ready to make your little sections um, in your pumpkin. So um, this is where your needle and embroidery, embroidery thread are gonna come in. Um, and so you, hey Marty, Angie, Julie, all the friends are on here. Um, so, Marty, this is funny that you're watching me. <laughs> Marty and I went to college together. Um, he's crafty um, in other ways. He works with metal and does some amazing stuff. I had shared um, some of his, I would definitely call it artwork. Um, a while ago, they were those metal states um, that I had up in my house and they were really cool. So anyways, that was awesome. And Lindsay, hi Pam. Um, Lindsay's super crafty also, I've discovered. She's been sharing some of her crafts with us. So, um, so yeah, we're gonna put the sections in. And um, yeah, so you'll take your needle here. So I already threaded mine because I didn't want you to have to watch me struggle through threading the needle. Um, but you will just kind of fold it over. Um, and then I use, this is probably about, I don't know, 60 inches or so worth. It's probably way longer than it needs to be, but there's nothing worse than getting to a point in your craft and realize that you cut the string too short. I'm sure if you do any sort of crafting or sewing, you've experienced that. Um, so yes, um, sorry. <laughs> yes, yeah, Marty. It's not my favorite thing. He's talk he's um saying he's getting some pressure to do some more lives. I'm getting more comfortable with it, but yes, it's a it can be a little intimidating being live in front of people, but it's kind of fun once you get going and you have all kinds of fun stuff to talk about. You could be doing your um metal work and people would love watching that, I'm sure. So so anyways, um after you get your string cut, you want to not at the end because that's going to um, keep it from pulling through um, when you're making your um, pumpkin sections. So a cool trick with this that I learned when I learned to make these pumpkins actually is if you, when you tie your knot, you put your fingers together here. Um, if you don't move these two fingers, um, so let's say, so you're here and then you're wrapping um, your string around to make your knot. If you keep these in the same, if you don't move them at all, just keep them tight on your string and then you tie your knots. Your knot will keep tying in the exact same spot. Yeah, so cool. Um, so anyways, really fun trick I never knew before. Um, so you can do, I would do three um, just to make a nice big knot there. So what you're going to do is start um, at the bottom of your pumpkin. And you're just going to kind of come through the bottom here across like this. And this is just how you're securing it um, to start with, okay? So you're gonna pull that through. Da -da -da. Okay, and then that little tail, you can it can just kind of tuck underneath there. So this is gonna be the bottom. It's not gonna show, so it doesn't have to be super pretty. But um, then if you have a sweater with, um, 
uh, like a pattern in it like this and you want you want your little string lines or sections to match up with that you can make that happen but um, that doesn't I don't care about that as much but so basically um, just go to the top of your pumpkin so you're coming up from the bottom and you want to be close to the stem and then you're just gonna go straight down and come out the bottom and I try to kind of angle this the nice long needle is good for this kind of try to bring it out close to where you um, where your thread is coming out at the bottom so you can see that my needle is coming out and then you're just gonna pull that through and I'll show you this is what I meant by you can line it up so I have these lines in the in the sweater so if you want to line it up with that you can and then after you do that, you're gonna pull it tight and it's gonna look funny. Your stem's gonna kinda go over to the side to begin with, but it'll all even out, so don't worry about that. So you're gonna pull it tight like this and then I'm just kind of holding it down with my fingers and then my thumb on the bottom. And then you're just gonna take your string um, on the bottom and you're just gonna go through the base a couple of times to just put two stitches in and that just keeps your string tight. So I'm gonna do one and then I'll show you what I did. So see how that, once I put that in, it kept my little section tight. So you can see the bottom here. So you're just gonna kinda go through like this and come out the other side. So you're not, doesn't matter where you do that at, you're just making a stitch to hold it tight so that your section stays stays tight like that, okay? So that's one. Then you're gonna work your way around the pumpkin. So um, you'll come, you come out the bottom again and then you're gonna go back up through the top and I would just go over, you can kind of look and see, um, kind of space them out so that they're somewhat even, but um, pumpkins in real life, hey, my husband's out the window watching me. Um, the pumpkins in real life don't have even sections. So again, I'm going straight down and then coming out the bottom. And leave that tail like this where you folded your string over pretty long because you don't want your needle to come unthreaded because then that's just a pain in the you know what. So, so there I got my second one and I'm just pulling it tight. And I'm just gonna hold it down again to keep it tight while I put my first stitch in. Once you get that first stitch in the bottom, it really stays tight, but the second stitch just sort of helps make sure that it doesn't come undone. So you're just gonna, again, just kinda go through and make it so it stays tight, okay? And we're gonna keep working our way around the pumpkin. Go right in. I'm gonna show you here from this angle. So you're going in right next to your stem, to your pumpkin stem, and you're gonna come out the bottom, being careful not to poke yourself. When I was making some last night, I definitely did poke myself a couple times. And then you're gonna come out here again and make one more section. Mine are actually lining up with my sweater lines pretty nicely, which I'm surprised about. Okay, so you got that tight. Make another little stitch in there. And pull it tight. Perfect. Are your kids, anybody's kids playing sports yet this fall? Um, oh, hey, Cricket! And um, my daughter has her first volleyball game tomorrow, so we've got a couple sections here. Um, so I'm excited to, to get to go to that. Um, my kids did play basketball this summer, um, but I just, and that was with their traveling team. I just feel like school sports are a little bit, you know, different. Um, so we're excited for that. Um, perfect, so you're going through again and pulling it tight. So this section I got a little bit closer together, but again, it doesn't really matter. Um, they look really cute whether they're, the sections are completely symmetrical or, um, 
you know, a little bit uneven. There's that. Okay, so I'm getting ready to make my last section. So you can see I have these three. I'm going to do one more here because I just think that that will look cute. You could probably just leave it like this, I guess, too, if you wanted it. It looks like a pumpkin. Um, so we're going to do that. The other thing I thought would be cute with these, which I haven't done, um, is you could tie a little bow with some of your twine afterwards around the stem, or you could get some cute ribbon, um, you know, and do that. And these, I think, would look really cute on your three-tiered stand, um, along with the little houses that Julie made. So if you were getting real crafty and you decided to do both, um, which again, you don't have to be super crafty to do these or have a, any sewing skills other than being able to kind of poke that needle down in there. So perfect. So that is my little pumpkin. So now just to finish it, you're going to um, just kind of go through the bottom again um, and just kind of tie. So I like to just kind of get a, get a piece of the sweater there. And then you can kind of loop de loop through your, don't pull it all the way through, and then you'll make a little knot. And I usually just do it twice just to make sure it doesn't come undone after I cut it. So I'll do that again. There we go. Perfect. Then you can just cut your excess string there and you have your little sweater pumpkin let's just give you a close-up view so I was just gonna show you all so I've made a couple of those that match this was one I made last last year when we made them oops I think my phone slipped a little bit let me just move that back um and then that other one that I showed you and then my big one so it's just kind of fun to have them all in a group. If you have a little basket to set them in, um, they look super cute together. Um, when you make the big one, if you use, thanks Kathy, um, if, you, if you use the um, front or back of a sweater, you would just cut you know, that whole square out and then you would just have to um, make one seam so that it makes like a tube. Um, out of the sweater and then you would just do the same process. So Kathy, I know you could figure that out, but um, it, that wouldn't be hard to do at all. And that's what I did with this one. Um, if you have a sewing machine or you could just, you know, kind of put some stitches in by hand and, and do that as well. So um, another kind of easy thing is if you wanted to make a bunch of them, get all your sleeves cut. So I have, this was a, another sweater that I thought was a pretty fall color. So get all your sleeves cut so you have them all kind of, you know, laid out and then you can do more of like an assembly line. So you would just tie the bases of all of them, stuff them all, do all the stems. So that, that would make it go faster too if you kind of have a little um, assembly line process going on there. Um, I also thought you could use a sock. So if you have some cute, um, you know, how <laughs> lots of times we end up with one sock um, instead of a pair. Um, but if you had some cute socks that had a pattern or were fall colors, that would be an easy way to make this too. You could just cut the, well, you wouldn't even necessarily need to cut the toe if you wanted to use that as your base or you could cut the kind of foot part off and just use the tall sock part. Um, so lots of possibilities for these. Um, I hope you saw our uh, little sneak peek of our um, next tea towel we have coming up. Um, we're super excited about it. That'll be our, our November one. And um, so if you haven't seen it, check out our Facebook or our Instagram and you can see a little sneak peek of that. Um, and we have a few openings, so um, we were excited that we got a few more. So um, if you're um, interested in that, it's dakotadixiesliving.com. Um, Dakota Dixie's living. Yes. Dot com. Um, and so yeah, go check that out and I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if you have any questions. I can certainly, um, you know, respond on here, um, or you can message us or, or anything like that. So I hope you guys are having a great week so far. Um, it's Wednesday, so you made it, made it halfway through. So, um, have a great night and we'll see you soon.